coming up this week on the center of it all. Even though the weather says differently, it is officially fall. We talked to one local farm about their upcoming festival. And you've seen paintings on canvas, but what about vintage windows? We show you one local who uses the Pennsylvania wild as inspiration for all her decor. Mel is in the kitchen and we show you a local pet who is looking for a new family to play with. Don't go anywhere, it's all coming up next right here on the center of it all. Welcome to the center of it all. We are in studio today and joined by Crystal Wasson of Wasson Farms. She's going to talk to us a little bit about their upcoming fall fest. So Crystal, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. So can you just kind of tell us a little bit about fall fest, just how it got started, where it came from, just things like that? Okay. Um, well, we started it around 2000. So it's hard for us to pinpoint just because it's grown so much. So we don't really know where our exact start was. but. It started as kind of a weekend just for everybody to come out to the farm. So our farm's always been uh, about education and bringing the public out and teaching them kind of about agriculture. And the pumpkins were always a fun way to tie everything in because everybody's always looking for a fun way to do their fall festivities and come out and pick their pumpkins and do all that stuff. When is it taking place this year? Uh, this year we're doing it October 7th and 8th and October 14th and 15th. So uh, hay rides will run from about 10.30 in the morning to roughly 4.30 at night. We say we like to take the last load up. That way it gives those last people about an hour if they want it to uh, peruse around and look for their pumpkin and then get back to down to the farm by 5.30 and that way it's not getting dark on them up there. What kinds of things do you guys have um, offer going on those two weekends? What all can people expect when they show up? Okay, uh, so the main attraction is obviously the hay rice and the pumpkin patch. We also have the homemade soups made by Steam Engine that you can purchase either by the bowl or by the quart. Some people even come in and get gallons of it. They love it so much. We've got four different kinds. We've got chicken corn soup, beef vegetable soup, ham and bean soup, and chili. As well as we have a corn maze for everybody to walk around with. We have a winery there. Each weekend's different. Our first weekend will be featuring Hungry Run Wine and Spirits. Our second one is Hawstone Hollow Winery. There's a corn maze for everyone to walk in. There's some farm animals to visit with. The, on October 8th, we will be having a car show. So if you uh, have a car that you love to exhibit around, we actually do cash prizes for people's choice. So that the people coming to our Fall Fest get to vote on whose car they like the best. Um, that's pretty much the highlights. We will have live music and you know everybody just likes to stick around and look at the mountain because we are right near the mountain range and it's usually very beautiful and very colorful at that time. So as I was talking to you, you were constantly getting prepared and getting things ready. What goes into preparing an event like this? Does the warmer temperatures we've been having, does that affect anything at all? How do you guys prepare for this big event? Actually, the heat's a big effect for us this year, so a lot of people are really happy, you know, always sticking around and everything. Um, our pumpkins didn't turn orange. <laughs> we had an issue this year. They're finally starting to turn, though, so this last bit of heat kind of helped them because it got cool there for a little bit, so some of the leaves and plants started to die off, uh, but the heat was keeping them alive uh, for a while there, and the constant rain because we've had this heat and rain combination. So this year's a little challenging with that because our pumpkins weren't turning orange, but they're finally orange and we're really happy just picking the location of the patch, you know, what kind of pumpkins we want to grow, uh, getting a variety for people. So every year people suggest different things they like. This year, our patch is bigger than it's ever been. Um, we did 30 acres of pumpkin this year and the patch that everybody picks out of is actually 22 acres. So uh, the eight acres is small things like gourds and that that we sell at our market. Uh, but there's a good diversity for everybody and we're really excited. What is your favorite part of this whole event? That's tough. Um, it's really interesting watching everybody up in the pumpkin patch just because everybody's searching for that perfect pumpkin, but everybody's opinion of a perfect pumpkin is totally different. And there's uh, kids that constantly send their parents on trips through the pumpkin patch just walking back and forth trying to find exactly what they wanted and here it's right next to the steps to get back on the wagon and it's like this misshapen little thing sometimes and it frustrates some parents but it's just adorable you know the kids get to just have a day and just run around and uh, find what's going to make their Halloween special. So where can viewers go to get more information about your guys' event? Uh, we do have a Facebook page, so uh, it's our Wasson Farm Market is what we go under on Facebook. Uh, that's pretty much our main source of information. If you need additional information, uh, you can call the farm. The number there is 814-237-2339. I will tell you this time of year, 
You're probably going to have to leave a message. We're not in the house very much, but we try to return everybody's call in the evening once we get in. Well, Crystal, thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us on the Center of It All today. Thank you. When we come back, we take a look through a window and see a little Pennsylvania wildlife. Welcome back. What if instead of throwing your old windows away, you use them for art? That's what Michaela Poland is doing. We went to see where she gets her inspiration for her unique paintings. It starts out as a plain window, but with a little paint, she turns normal glass into a canvas depicting the beautiful wildlife that can be found here in central PA. I just decided to design some things that are PA inspired and Elk County inspired, and that was kind of like the break for me but it was a lot of fun and, and again everyone responded really well to it so I got into stickers and I'm making t-shirts now and koozies and that's kind of the whole PA made is the painting and the stickers and everything inspired by the PA wilds in Elk County and the area. So when I asked her why windows, Poland said that that's just what she's loved to paint on for the last few years. When she was 14, she just grabbed a glass vase and painted a beach scene, and it's just stuck with her. I just started painting more on windows and collecting windows and doing vases and stuff. And uh, my very first show was in the spring at the Ridgeway Rendezvous, and I only had a couple paintings, but like, again, everyone responded really, really well, and I started getting invited to different shows and I started painting more and then I was like, wow, I should like brand myself and that's kind of where PA Made came from. The first thing she ever painted was, of course, being an Elk County, an elk. And she says, despite the challenges, those are her favorite animals to paint. Probably the elk. They're the more difficult thing to, to paint because they have like more muscles and more definition, but they, because of that, they're more fun to paint they're kind of more of a challenge. But even though they are on windows, she has a few precautions for people about how to care for them. I don't ever recommend putting them outside or painting in a, like a real window because paint doesn't like to stick to windows, so they like shouldn't get wet. Um, so it is, I've learned about how to get it to stick better, how to make it not like see-through. So it's just kind of a learning process with every window. She starts by finding a picture for inspiration and then sketches the picture in pencil on the window, going back over it with paint. But she can do more than just wild animals. Have a specific idea in mind? I've gotten a couple. I did someone's dog that had passed away mm -hmm. on a small window. And then I had a woman that, um, she is a camp up in Driftwood and she sent me a couple pictures of elk from her camp. And it was like during the winter time, so she'd asked me like to do an elk and she kind of sent me this inspiration. So it wasn't really custom like the dog would be, but she kind of had this idea and I, I painted it for her. Even though Poland has only been doing this for the last year, she said she is surprised and thankful for how well her pictures have been received by the people in the community. I always keep saying it went zero to 60 for me and like that, that really, the, the rendezvous happens in March and it's now September and I'm doing this every single day and like with having the stickers like I'm getting a lot of custom sticker orders for businesses or um, for campgrounds or anything like that so um, it's been really busy for me and everyone likes how unique it is like you know the paintings really unique because they are on windows and then the stickers are really unique because I try to do things that are like inspired by the area. Like I have a Crick one and I have like one that's like Elk County shaped. So you can't really find anything like this anywhere else. But I think that's what people really like about it. The hardest part about it all, not finding inspiration or even the painting, but finding the right canvas to bring her pictures to life. I'm always looking for windows. <laughs> I have so many people that come up to me and they're like, oh, I just replaced all the windows in my house and I like really odd shaped ones. So um, I'm always on the lookout for windows because it's not really like I can go to the store and buy them. Like I've, I've pulled them like out of the side of the road, like people put out for garbage or like in the craziest places. But yeah, the finding the windows themselves is probably like the most challenging part of this. For more information on PA Made, check out her Facebook page. When we come back, Mel shows us a burger without the beef. Welcome back to the center of it all. Even though it is officially fall, the weather has still felt like summer. So Mel's made the perfect burger to transition us from summer into fall. Let's take a look. I 
didn't expect to get a second burger recipe on the air on WHVL TV this season. That said, Happy Valley's been blessed with two extra weeks of glorious heat and sunshine. For me, that means more garden tomatoes and basil. I'm going caprese today. Ground chicken caprese style burgers with balsamic mayonnaise. Because it's quite common to add a splash of balsamic vinegar to a classic caprese salad, I'm using that ingredient to make a sandwich spread for our burgers today. And I've got three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise in this little bowl and I'm adding a tablespoon and a half of balsamic vinegar and a quarter teaspoon each of salt, pepper, garlic powder and onion powder and dried basil. Stir this all together. Till it's thoroughly and evenly combined. Only takes a second or two. That looks perfect. I'm going to put a lid on it, put it in the refrigerator to chill, and we're going to make our chicken burgers. There's two pounds of chopped chicken tenderloins in the work bowl of my food processor, which I've fitted with a steel blade. I've got a half a cup of loosely packed fresh basil leaves, and I'm just going to rough tear these into pieces. Add them to the work bowl. Oh, they smell wonderful. I just picked them out of the garden this morning. Two whole garlic cloves and about a cup and a half of diced sweet onion. And I'm using a Vidalia onion today. Put the lid on my processor. And I'm gonna give this about 15 or 20 rapid on off pulses. Now that's rough chopped my chicken and now I'm going to add one extra large egg. That looks like two eggs but when I cracked my extra large egg it had two yolks which is just fine by me. And I've got a half teaspoon of dried basil leaves, sea salt and black pepper. Now with the motor running I'm going to process this mixture for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now our chicken is really finely ground and we're going to make our patties. Ground chicken is a sticky business. It's so sticky and hard to manage that a lot of people want to put breadcrumbs in it. Don't do it! Breadcrumbs just dry your burgers out. I'm going to show you an easy keep your hands clean trick today that will produce moist juicy burgers and all you need is a baking pan and a hamburger press ring. I've put this ring around five ounces of my chicken mixture and I'm using a kitchen scale to measure what, what's going into these and I'm just going to press my burger flat into the ring mold. it up and I'm ready for the next one and I'm going to keep doing this till I've got eight patties made.
I've got eight five ounce chicken burgers and all I'm going to do right now is pop these into the freezer for about 30 minutes not to freeze them completely just to firm them up enough to be able to put them on the grill grids. To cook the burgers spray a grill pan with no stick cooking spray and place it over medium heat on the stove top. Place as many chicken burgers as will comfortably fit without crowding the pan on the grill grids. Cook, turning only once until burgers are golden on both sides, about 13 minutes per side, lowering the heat if and when necessary to keep them from over browning or burning. A safe temperature equals safe to eat poultry. Use an instant read meat thermometer to reach the temperature of 165 degrees. Once the temperature has been reached, top each burger with two slices of mozzarella cheese, cover the pan and wait for the cheese to melt. About one minute. These amazing burgers contain every element of a classic caprese salad. Same day picked tomatoes and basil, mozzarella cheese, a drizzle of EVOO and some balsamic vinegar too. A perfect end of summer, last day of caprese celebration. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. My favorite burger that Mel has made is the Raging Cajun Pork Burger, but I have to say after eating this one, it's a close second. When we come back, we show you a beagle who is still looking for her forever family. Welcome back to the center of it all. She's not your average beagle and she is in a foster home right now, but she still needs your help in finding her perfect forever family. Alicia, I'm here with Daisy from the Nittany Beagle Rescue. She's a six-year-old beagle bulldog mix, English bulldog. So she's a bit heavier than the typical beagle of this size. She's about 50 pounds, but that's really normal for bulldogs. They're very dense little dogs. She's very sweet, and um, she's good with people. We've had her at Petco a couple times. She loves other people. She loves people. She's pretty good with kids. She is a little uh, toy and food aggressive, so maybe not a household with real little kids that are going to be easily knocked over or carrying food around at her face level. So maybe like a house with 10 or older kids would be better. Um, she loves to run around, so a fence is always good. She's very cute. She gets this excited. She'll like look up at you as you're walking and then she runs away real quick and then looks back at you like, why aren't you chasing me? She uh, is great in the car. She will just lie there, but if you are willing to put the window down for her. She loves to put her head out the window and get her ears flapping. That wraps up this week's Center of It All. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.